right with our Heavenly Father. We are covered in his blood. We are accepted in the beloved. And as he is right now in heaven with no sickness, no disease in his body, so are we in this earth. We are um, fully provided for. We are cared for. We are taken care of by our Heavenly Father. And he loves you and he has a good plan for you. So welcome to the three o'clock hour. This is your Ruth moments. It is the time for you to steal away. I hope that you've uh, kind of penciled this into your week that on Saturdays at three o'clock, you'll take this time for yourself to be poured into. Get your favorite drink, your favorite food, a notebook, a pen, and come to have an encounter with your Heavenly Father. I pray that uh, this will be everything that you need and want um, that you'll encounter his love and experience supernatural miracle signs and wonders during this time and to follow, to confirm his word. So thank you for taking time to join me. Um, last week, we began reading the book of Ruth. We started in chapter one. I encouraged everyone to uh, sit down and just take a quick moment and start with chapter one with Ruth so that you uh, become familiar uh, with the book of Ruth. It's so rich. It's so full. Um, so I'm just taking a quick moment and tagging um, our friends and family, asking them to uh, come into the room, uh, to come into the study with us. Um, I appreciate you tagging others, uh, commenting, uh, whatever you feel like you want to do. Um, please feel free to do that. Um, let me know if I'm sharing something that you um, needed to hear or it was an on-time word for you. So thanks for your patience while I do this. I am Lakeisha Lewis, um, Lakeisha Diane on Facebook, uh, Lakeisha Lewis on YouTube, and we also have our website, IWillRemainRG.com, where all of our information is there. So if there's someone who does not um, participate in Facebook and you want to share a message, you can also share that information with them via the website. Um, also, uh, we have uh, Let's Talk Tuesdays with KYC. Um, April has Walk It Out ministry. We also accept prayer requests. So if you need someone to come into agreement with you and believe your Heavenly Father with you, um, we're the group for you. Uh, hey, Jenny. Hey, Jessica. Thank you, ladies, for hopping on. I appreciate you taking time out of your busy day to uh, join me. Um, I hope some other people join us. Um, but if not, uh, hey, they can catch the replay. So thank you for watching the replay ahead of time. Um, but yes, I the message for today is a woman of influence. Um, and I thought that I was going to get more into chapter two, but um, our Heavenly Father actually had me go back and take a look at chapter one. Um, there's something else that I, we need to pull out of that. So last week I shared that um, for 2021, where you go and who you go with who you are connected to in this season and when you go is going to be vital um, and how you go is going to be important as well how you go so Naomi and Ruth and Orpa they began their journey and they began by walking um, so so many times we get to the point where we know that we're supposed to be doing something and we're forcing things to happen. Hey, Takesha, thank you for hopping on. I appreciate you. We get to the point where we're trying to force things to happen according to how we think that they're supposed to happen. And then we get into this works of the flesh and forcing stuff that we shouldn't be. But so how you go will be important. But even more than that, I want to talk about Naomi's sphere of influence. So um, if you have your notes from last week, where you go will be vital. Who you go with, when you go, and how you go will be vital in this season. All right. So I want to talk about Naomi's sphere of influence. As soon as Naomi made a decision that she heard that 
God was uh, blessing her land, she was returning home. And as soon as she turned to go back to Bethlehem, she was actually gaining ground towards seeing the manifestation of her provision and her blessings. And so for someone, I want to put emphasis on she turned back. And to turn and that word repentance means to change your mind. So you're going to turn and change what you're focusing on, what you're thinking about. There is a repentance, a changing of your mind in this season about how you see your heavenly father and his provisions. All right. So uh, let me see. Where do I want to begin Okay, in the days when the judges ruled in Israel, a severe famine came upon the land. So a man from Bethlehem in Judah left his home and went to live in the country of Moab, taking his wife and two son his two sons with him. The man's name was Elimelech and his wife was Naomi. Their two sons were Malon and Kilion. They were e e Ephrathites from Bethlehem in the land of Judah. And when they reached Moab, they settled there. So when they found themselves leaving Bethlehem, it was a famine that had came on. And a lot of times when um, Israel experienced famine in the land, it was because of their, it was a direct reflection of their behavior, something that they weren't doing. They were either worshiping other gods or they didn't follow what uh God was telling them to do at the time. And so it's considered a time of judgment for them. But I wanted to let you know that we are in a time of famine and it doesn't have to do anything with the judgment. The world is at a fallen place anyway. Um, we, as his children, are called out. Even though the famine is around us and we may see and have some experiences with the famine, um, we will be provided for. That is his promise, that he will take care of us during the time of famine. And if you look back throughout um, the Old Testament at different times of famine, um, even, I believe it was Isaac, he even prospered um, during the time of famine. So just because that's what's happening in the world around us, remember we are in this world, but we are not of this world and we have a heavenly bank account that we can withdraw from so that when there is an area of lack we will go to our heavenly father pray and ask him and he will lead us and guide us into that provision so when uh, this family Naomi's family found themselves leaving um, Bethlehem they were already abundantly supplied for and um, I'm, I'm just assuming I'm using my creative mind in this, that um, Elimelech was a man of um, prosperity and abundance. He had a lot. So they were leaving full of blessings. They had each other. She had her husband. She had her two sons. And they had everything that they needed. So they, he probably felt like this was a strategic move. The, a strategic move. He probably thought this was a strategic move, that this move was going to be one that supplied him with abundance and that it was going to be a move that blessed his family. And so for many of us, we feel like this time in this season, we are thinking within our own wisdom and, and what we know and we're making moves which we think are strategic but I want to remind you um, that we have to stay on his path following the impulses of his spirit he has declared over you if you are a part of the Ruth group if you are hearing this message this message is for you that in Psalm 65 11, he has promised us that our path is dripping in abundance what path is that his path his plan for our lives is dripping in abundance so as we continue to read as as they made 
uh, the move, they were moving actually away from the house of bread, the house of provision, the house of God, the presence of God. They, they thought they were being strategic, but they were actually moving themselves further and further away from the provision and the place where God was. And a lot of times when we get into situations where we start to see lack, we get fearful and we start to make moves that move us and make decisions that are moving us further and further away from the path that our Heavenly Father has for us. So we read last week how she found that word she was turning back to go back home. And I want to pick up at the end. So um, when Naomi saw that Ruth was determined to go with her, she said nothing more. Starting at verse uh, chapter 1, verse 19. So the two of them continued on their journey. When they came to Bethlehem, the entire town was excited by their arrival. Is it really Naomi? The women asked. And then she responded, Don't call me Naomi. Instead, call me Mara. For the Almighty has made my life very bitter for me. I went away full, but the Lord has brought me home empty. Why call me Naomi when the Lord has caused me to suffer and the Almighty has sent such tragedy upon me? And that's how we often feel in life. That the circumstances, circumstances, tragedies, and traumas that we have experienced, some, oftentimes we look at it as if um, our Heavenly Father is angry with us. And that was what her experience was. She felt like he was angry with her. But she didn't realize that everything that had transpired was actually moving her back into alignment with the Heavenly Father back on the path to being reconnected and to seeing the manifestation of provisions and blessing. He wanted to restore her. He wanted to heal her. That it wasn't his doing that her husband and her sons and everything that she had lost she left full and came back empty. It wasn't his doing, but that he was now calling and 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 pushing her, um, guiding her back into the land to where she could be provided for again, to be protected and taken care of. And so I want to look at her influence. Now, when she left Bethlehem, she left Bethlehem again. She, she left full. We know that. Why? Because in verse 19 and uh, 20, she says that she is now empty. The Lord has brought her back empty. So before she left, she was full. She had an abundant supply. She was abundantly blessed. She had all of her needs met. She had everything that she needed. So when Naomi went to go back, she actually probably struggled like most of us who are people of influence, people who are connected to us. To come back to something that you walked away from, it requires a great amount of humility. But I'm pretty sure guilt, shame, and condemnation wanted to keep her stuck. And so what she began to do was look at her situation and her circumstances. And that she didn't make the connection that when when she turned to leave Bethlehem, that she was actually beginning a downhill process. She was moving further away from God. And when you walk away from God, your life begins to go down. But as soon as she made the decision, as soon as she took the first decided step, be decided. The first decided step to return back to Bethlehem, the path of provision began to manifest. She was now venturing back into the uphill. She was getting closer to God, which each step that she took as she traveled back to Bethlehem, she was coming closer and closer to her heavenly father and to the provisions that he had already laid out for her. So she struggled with guilt, shame, and condemnation because she left fully blessed, but now she was coming back empty. And every time that you are being used by God, you actually, um, if you're a leader, if you are someone who is a... a ahead of your family, if you are the first person to step out, you often um, can, when you make a mistake, you can feel like 
your your mistake has been made very publicly you can feel like a failure she probably thought what will everyone think and what will everyone say here i left here blessed but now i'm coming back empty and there's a certain amount of transparency that when you are a woman of influence that you must have you must have that that you must be a uh, transparent with people and it's a hard thing to do. It's hard to be humble and to be transparent with people and to say, yes, I made a mistake. I was blessed, but I made this. I left and now I've come back empty. So the further away from the path and presence of our Heavenly Father, the more difficult it is for us to feel and experience his supernatural love for us. All right, are we um, having some issues? I'm sorry. Let me know uh, if it's working. Um, but as soon as she turned to go back home, her life was moving toward uphill. She was moving toward the blessings and provision. She was walking towards God. So you can strengthen others even in your failures. If you feel like you have made a lot of mistakes in your life, I want you to be encouraged by this story. If you felt like you didn't speak up and use your voice when you should have. So um, our Heavenly Father was actually allowing me to play this out. Naomi was a woman of great influence, which means she used her voice. She was well known in the community because as soon as she came back, the women were excited is what it says. They were excited that she she was returning home. So this means that before she left, she was a woman of influence. She used her voice. She used her actions and she must have been a blessing to everyone because why else would it cause excitement? So I had to look up the word excite and to, to excite means to cause strong feelings of enthusiasm and eagerness in someone. So that means that she had a positive impact on the people around her. In Bethlehem, she was well known. She was a blessed woman of God. And so when she left, she had a reputation now when she left she was she was full when she left but she was empty when she returned but i wanted to let you know that your influence it your influence is the capacity to have an effect on the character development and behavior of someone or something so she was a woman who made an impact and i believe in my imagination that when her her husband said Elimelech said we're leaving Mo we're leaving Bethlehem and let's go to Moab she did not use her influence she went along with what her husband suggested that she didn't she wasn't being used by Holy Spirit to steer her family in the right direction and to say no. I believe she kept silent, which which is one of the reasons why she felt guilty about all of the loss that she suffered. She felt like her keeping silent in this time, allowing her husband to move them away from Bethlehem was a direct result of her not speaking up and using her influence to positively impact her family so that they would remain with God, to remain in his presence, to remain where the provision and protection was in spite of the lack that surrounded them. I'm going to let that sink in because I think that sometimes we don't speak up. We don't we don't speak up for ourselves. We don't put boundaries in place with people. We don't teach people how to treat us. We don't use our sphere of influence like our Heavenly Father desires us to. We as women, we are a type of Holy Spirit to those who are around us. We are a type of Holy Spirit. We are, we are not Holy Spirit. We are not to try to control and manipulate and transform people but we are a guide we point people to our heavenly father when we use our voice and when we speak up for ourselves there is such a thing as healthy confrontation and sometimes confrontation is needed in order to work out what is being misunderstood or misconstrued or what is not working i i feel like i'm 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 sharing a word with you, women, Tracy, 
Takesha, Sophia, you know, Jessica. I feel like this is a word on time for you guys, uh, but I'm not seeing nobody really respond. <laughs> But you can strengthen people in your failures. All of the mistakes that you have made, whether they were a direct result of your own decisions or as a result of someone else's decision, your, your story, your testimony will strengthen others. Even your downfalls, even your faults, even your failures, those will be used to glorify your heavenly father. You see, his glory is upon you regardless. His glory was already upon Naomi regardless of what she did or did not do. He hadn't changed her mind about her. She felt like all those things had worked against her, but they were working for her to move her back to the place that she should have stayed at. Hey, mom, thanks for hopping on. See, when you, when your heavenly father doesn't change, he hasn't changed his mind about you. And just because you have failed, his glory, his good opinion still remains the same about you. He doesn't see you any different. Your testimony will encourage others about the goodness of God. You are then glorifying, speaking well of your heavenly father. He's already glorifying. He's already glorying over you. You are surrounded. You've been crowned with his glory. His opinion about you, regardless of the decisions that you have made up to this point and the future mistakes that you may make, your downfalls, your faults, your failures, he doesn't, those things have already been taken into account. So all those things do not work against you, but guess what? They all work for you. Romans 8 and 28 says that all things work together for good. He knows what you're going to do before you do it. So instead of getting into guilt and shame and condemnation and allowing the enemy to tell you that you have messed up and that you're not good enough and that your heavenly father, this is a direct result of what the decision you made because you weren't lit. Don't, don't buy it. Don't, don't buy into the lie. You are already you are already perfect in his sight because you have been accepted in the beloved and he has a very good opinion of you. He loves you and he knows that you flourish your mind, your body. We are made to flourish in love, not in guilt, shame and condemnation. Your heavenly father is always wooing you back to him. He always is bringing you back to himself. So even when the, you're unclear about making a decision, he wants you to be decided because you can make a, a, a mistake in faith and he can always still use that to work it out for your good. It's when we allow fear because that's what drove Elimelech and Naomi to leave Bethlehem was it was fear based that this is an area. This is a place that's lack. And they didn't want to go through the struggle. Um, and so they wanted to position themselves strategically, strategically position themselves for increase. But they were getting further and further away from the Heavenly Father, from experiences, experiencing his love and his provision by going off and doing something within their own means, within their own strength and their own ability. Now, I do believe that that as they lived there for years, I believe that Naomi still was a woman of positive influence. Why else would Ruth dedicate her life to to being there with Naomi why did they weep bitterly when she told them to turn and go back because she was still operating and using her gifts and talents in the place she had no business being but even in the places that we should not go the mistakes that we should not have made they've been calculated into it so what did our heavenly father do but he used it as a benefit to Ruth it was a blessing to Ruth to be connected to such a godly woman. And you know she used her her um experience her influence to to develop character um in 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 Ruth. Ruth was a reflection of her relationship with Naomi. 
<laughs> are you being used like that with the people that are that are connected to you are you the one that they can come to and that you will get be that shining example of the glory of god that you are a woman of faith and you you encourage them and you strengthen them and you pray with them and you speak wisdom and the word of truth are you having a positive influence on those who are connected to you if you're a part of this group guess what you are you are even if you are only doing it sometimes guess what he's developing that gift in you so that no matter where you go you will shine for his glory and for his honor she had a sphere of influence god has given you your heavenly father has given you a sphere of influence that you can positively impact those are around you. That when you show up in the room, there should be excitement. You should cause strong feelings of enthusiasm and, and eagerness in someone. They should be glad that you have shown up. <laughs> that you've showed up in the room. The whole atmosphere should shift and change just because you, Jenny, are there. Because, Sophia, your smile brightens the room that they know that they're going to have a holy ghost good time when you show up because you're going to bring your faith and your faith is going to be connected to their face and, and then faith and they know that it's going to be a holy ghost good time a holy ghost good time our heavenly father's glory our glory will come together and it will glorify the heavenly father and we will be excited about being with one another we are encouraged and uplifted when we come together on saturdays i'm encouraged and i'm uplifted because i'm able to encourage you and speak well of my heavenly father glorifying him and i know that the glory is falling upon you that you are now realizing your mind is changing about how you see yourself and how he sees you you're starting the light bulbs are coming on and it's brightening up and it's lifting off that guilt and condemnation and that shame and you're able to walk in the newness in which christ jesus died for us to walk in naomi and ruth traveled until they came to the town of bethlehem and when the two women entered bethlehem all the people were very excited when we come together i'm very excited The entire town was excited when she returned. The entire town was excited. Here she was going back feeling guilt, shame, and condemnation. I left full. I'm now empty. And so she wanted to force how she was perceiving herself upon the people. But the people were excited that she had returned. They were just happy that she had returned because they knew the gift that was inside of her. And, and, and what she brought to the table. So much so that she went to Moab and she had an impact on a young woman named Ruth. And Ruth dedicated her life to serving her, to serving her people, and to serve her God. What a mighty woman of influence. So if you are a part of this group, if you are hearing this message, you are a person of influence. And you have the opportunity to positively impact the world around you. That even if we are facing lack and famine and, and chaos and confusion, when you show up, peace flows. Joy flows. Encouragement and excitement begins to flow. Wisdom begins to flow. We get to see the blessings in the hand of our Heavenly Father because you are a type of Holy Spirit. You are glorifying the Father. You are pointing them to Christ Jesus. I wonder if she would have just spoken up in the beginning. But I believe she kept her mouth shut. She didn't use her sphere of influence. And that is a word for us, that as we go through 2021, that we need to open our mouths. Open our mouths and encourage and uplift and point people in the right direction. I wondered if she had known she shouldn't have left Bethlehem. But she kept her mouth shut. And so in this season, because you know that the path that you're on right now, the path that you are on right, right now today, 
you know that that is a godly path a path that's been is dripping in abundance I want to let you know that don't leave this path, that don't allow circumstances and situations get you into works of the flesh and move you outside. Don't, don't allow fear to motivate you to move outside of this path. Use your words, use your mouth, encourage yourself, encourage the people around you, use your sphere of influence to um, to move in the direction that the, uh, the impulses of his spirit is leading you in. Don't toy with the shoulda, coulda, wouldas. I'm pretty sure she felt like she shoulda, coulda, woulda done a lot of different things. But I want to remind you that in this season that the shoulda, coulda, wouldas, the shame that comes with the shoulda, coulda, wouldas, they're not going to fuel your faith. Let that go. All the shoulda, coulda, wouldas, all of the things that you did, or did not do have been calculated and you right now are on the path that is dripping in abundance. Ruth had the best teacher. She had a great example. And I want to encourage some of you that if you are an example to someone else, Sophia, if you're being an example to your girls, you know, Tracy, if you're being an example to your daughter, be that example. Don't be afraid to be that light. Don't be afraid to shine in front of people. Don't try to dumb yourself down or dim your light and other to allow others to feel comfortable around you. Allow the glory of our Heavenly Father to shine upon you. Let his good opinion of you. Don't don't hide your blessings, whether they're little to you or small. Don't 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 feel like you can't share your experiences with other people the experiences that you're having with the heavenly father don't feel like you can't tell people about the ruth group and have a real conversation with them about the things that our heavenly father is doing with us in this group and in the word that we we share throughout this week invite somebody encourage somebody no you need to do this your life will never be the same I want to remind you of the type of woman that Naomi is that she poured into Ruth and Ruth became and that I am pouring into you. And this is the desire our Heavenly Father has for both you and I. Lakeisha, he says to us, she oversees the care of her house. She is never lazy. Her children say good things about her. Her husband brags about her and says, there are many good women, but you are the best. Sophia, you are the best. Tracy, you are the best. Mom, you are the best. Jenny, you are the best. Takesha, you are the best. We are the best. The women of the Ruth group, we are the best. Grace and beauty can fool, fool you, but a woman, who respects the Lord should be praised and how I'm going to say and will be praised when you use your influence, when you don't try to cover up the glory of God and the goodness of God in your life and the blessings that you do have. Let's magnify what we do have. Let's not focus on what we don't have. Let us magnify what we do have. We will be praised. Give her the reward she deserves. Praise her in public for what she has done. That is Proverbs 31 verses 27 through 31. And that's out of the ERV. Your heavenly father sees you as that woman because you come to him, because you are in relationship with him. He already has your path abundantly supplied for. Just continue. I want you to remain unshakable. Continue in the path in which you know that you are destined for. This is the prayer that Jesus prayed. This is what he spoke to Simon Peter in Luke 22. Verses 31, Simon, Simon, Peter, listen, Satan has demanded permission to sift all of you like grain, but I have prayed, especially for you, 
I have prayed for you, Sophia. I have prayed for you, Takesha and Jenny and the women of the Ruth group. I have prayed for you all that your faith and confidence in Christ Jesus will not fail. And because your faith doesn't fail, once you have turned, changed your mind, repented, changed your mind about how you view yourself and how you view your heavenly father, once you have turned back, strengthened, and support those who are connected to you. Now I'm I'm ad libbing because I'm reading the Amplified Brother uh, version and it's talking about brothers in faith. But we are connected. We are sisters in Christ Jesus. We are connected in Christ. And so I am I'm encouraging you to to continue to be that support and to encourage other. You are a woman of influence. You have been crowned. You are ruling and reigning in this world and in this life. You have a sphere of influence so that you can positively impact and excite with enthusiasm those people who are around you. They should feel blessed by just being connected to you when you and them leave uh encounter each other they should feel energized and enthusi enthusiastic about life that is the desire of our heavenly father that you will wear his glory well that you won't hide it that you won't try to dumb it down and that you won't try to be quiet about it, but that you will use your voice in this season to speak of his glory, that you will glorify him because he has already decided that he has a good opinion about you and who he has created you to be. This is the vision and the current move of God. Rest, reset, turning back, making sure, sure you stay on the path that he's already abundantly supplied for, reflection and release. That is his word. And that's all that I have for this Saturday. I just wanted to encourage you that you are a woman of influence and that you do make a difference and that you matter. That when you operate according to the way that you have been designed and created to operate, when you are pursuing your passions and the talents, the things that you are, you are good at, you are a blessing to all the people who are divinely connected to you. You help everybody that you're connected to become who they were created to be. You help them be proud of the faith that they have in Christ Jesus and that they can they can they can celebrate being in relationship with him. Don't hide your faith. Don't hide what God is doing. Don't hide the blessings. Don't dumb it down. Let it shine. Let it shine in this season and stay connected. Stay connected to us. Stay connected to the Ruth group. Make it a part of your weekly time with the Lord that you will tune in every Saturday at 3 o'clock. Get your favorite drink. Get, the, get a hot cup of coffee, a hot cocoa. Get you a sandwich. Whatever it is. That you delight in. If you like a sweet treat. Like if you wanted some cake or some pie. And you just want. Oh taste and see that the Lord is good. And that his mercies endure forever. Delight yourself in the Lord. And he will give you the desires of your heart. He wants you to enjoy the time. That you spend in his word. It should be one that infuses you with strength and energy. To continue on the path that he has set forth. I pray that our Heavenly Father will continue to flood your heart with the light and revelation of his love for you and his plans and his purposes for you. That as he continues to pour out and show you his love and kindness, even in this darkness, that you will begin to shine for his glory and have a positive impact to be a woman of influence on those who are divinely connected to you. I am so grateful and thankful that you did take time out of your busy Saturday to join me in this Ruth Moments. Blessings and abundance to you. I speak life, love, peace, and joy. I speak supernatural miracles, signs, and wonders to follow this word. So I will be here again next Saturday. Until I see you then, have a great weekend. I love you ladies to life. Bye.